Hello. During this video, we will discuss wounds and infections commonly associated with injection drug use and the risk considerations for different injection sites and methods. We will identify strategies to prevent injection-related infections and injuries, as well as describe basic wound care and red flags requiring medical attention. Some of the potential harms of injecting are overdose, infections like abscesses and cellulitis, vein damage, HIV, and hepatitis C. In many states, including Maryland, safe use kits containing sterile supplies and equipment can be found by contacting your local harm reduction organization or finding the closest syringe service program. These programs can be found by a simple internet search, Harm Reduction Maryland or Syringe Services Maryland. The types of sterile supplies you can expect to find in a safe use kit are new syringes, tourniquets, sterile water, cookers, bandages, and alcohol wipes. If you are injecting drugs, it is best to reduce the risks as much as possible. To reduce the risks, it is always best to use the shortest and thinnest needle available. This will allow you to reach your injection site without the needle breaking. Try to only use new syringes for injecting. If you must reuse, use only your own syringe. Sharing needles greatly increases the risks of contracting bloodborne viruses like HIV and hepatitis C. When injecting, people will inject into a vein, into a muscle, or under the skin. The safest places to inject are on your arms, hands, and legs. The most dangerous areas are in your groin, neck, and feet. Always inject towards your heart. Use a bandage to cover your injection site or puncture wound. If you hit an artery, apply firm pressure to stop the bleeding for at least 30 minutes. If possible, raise the affected area and lie down. Dial 911 for an ambulance if bleeding does not stop. Even if bleeding does stop, contact a doctor or go to your local urgent care facility. Whenever possible, wash your hands with soap or use sanitizer before injecting to avoid contaminating your drugs. Water can also be easily contaminated, so don't contaminate your sterile water by sticking a used syringe in it. Whenever possible, use sterile water from a safe use kit or boil your water source for 10 minutes. If you must use water from a toilet, pull from the tank, not the toilet bowl. People who inject drugs are susceptible to infections such as an abscess. This is a swollen infected sore and is usually caused by a bacterial infection. Wounds may not always be located at an injection site. An abscess can develop anywhere on the body and they can feel hot and develop into a hard pus filled core. To care for an abscess, keep the area clean and warm. Soak in hot water or use a clean warm compress. Elevate the area and let it drain. Do not squeeze the abscess. Avoid injecting into or next to the abscess. Seek medical attention if you start experiencing chills, fever, extreme fatigue, or pain in the abscess. This could be a blood infection that can turn deadly. Another common infection for people who inject drugs is cotton fever. This is caused by the bacteria that live in used cotton filters. It's not caused by injecting cotton fibers. It can be uncomfortable, but not usually something serious. This can be avoided by only using sterile cotton whenever available and not using the same filter multiple times, as this could cause you to inject the bacteria that causes cotton fever. Using sterile cotton, such as Q-tips and cotton balls, to filter drug impurities is always best. Avoid using cigarette filters, which contain small glass fibers. Symptoms occur soon after injecting. These symptoms include chills, fever, shaking, hot flashes, nausea, and headache. If symptoms occur, wrap yourself in a blanket and try to get comfortable. Go to the ER if symptoms last longer than four hours. Endocarditis is an infection of the heart lining and is the most serious common infection in people who inject drugs. It's caused by bacteria that entered the bloodstream during injecting. 
This bacteria builds up and weakens the valves and other parts of the heart. It can cause a fever, chest pains, fainting spells, shortness of breath, and death if left untreated. It's treatable with antibiotics and usually requires hospitalization. If you think a wound is treatable, first examine the wound for signs of an infection. Red color is healthy tissue, black means the tissue is dead, and if the wound smells, it is infected. Check for any swelling, tenderness, thick pus, or redness spreading around. Be sure to wash your hands with antibacterial soap and put on sterile gloves. Open the wound carefully and examine for pus. If pus is present, soak a clean towel in warm water and hold against the wound for five minutes. Clear away and drain any pus that you see. Wash the infected wound with an antiseptic or disinfectant solution, then clean and dry with sterile gauze. This antiseptic solution should be applied three to four times a day. The wound should remain clean and open during the healing process. If you suspect an infection, don't allow the wound to close. If you develop chills, sweats, or a fever, this could be signs of a serious infection and you should seek medical treatment immediately. Because of stigma, many people who inject drugs will wait until a wound becomes badly infected before seeking treatment. Pay attention to your body and seek medical help if something doesn't feel right.